Good morning, everyone. Hope you're well. Hello, hello. Um, as always, let me know if you can't hear me. Um, my levels look fine. Remember, if anyone wants to ask any questions, uh, especially related to the last couple of videos, make sure. Make sure you um, put a whole bunch of emojis before or after, before and after your questions in the um, in the live chat. Uh, let's get started. So feel free to talk amongst yourselves. Um, while you guys um, start throwing me your questions, I'll go, th I'll go through some of the uh, notable comments from the last couple of videos, just so we can get things started. Uh, Boffin Grusky, my man, he, um, he put a nice comment under my video, having multiple partners and not feeling happy. I was talking about today's hookup culture um, and us older guys, we can remember times pre-internet, what it was like when you go out with your group of friends and you'd meet a group of girls and um, how you couldn't really be two-faced. Otherwise your friends would know and her friends would know. So everything you had to be on more civil behavior and you couldn't just um, throw people away um, because they had, to, they had to consider you, you had to consider them. He says, I'm old enough to remember when first kiss and going steady and ten, until death do you part were milestones on the path to mature, stable adulthood. First F-U-C-K, next hookup until something better comes along appear to be the modern replacements. Yeah. Which leaves me wondering how mature, stable adulthood is ever attained. Yeah. You're always having fun. It's, uh, it, amazed, it amazed me dating later in life, the amount of women that uh, are still uh, acting in um, high school mode. And sometimes I wonder whether it's, they just kind of go around, they, they, they go by, the, they only knew dating in high school mode. And then some of them might have been married for 20 or 30 years and now they're single and all they do is like, well, how did I ride a skateboard again? Let me just do that. And then they go back to dating and having relationships like a naive high school person. Um, and, you know, part of you goes, well, can you really blame people? That's all they know. They've been out of the game for so long. It's, uh, it's like you haven't played sports in 20 years. And then you go back and start playing sports and you look like a goofball. Um, but more than that today, I think people who, there's a lot of people who haven't been married um, or had families like myself, but they haven't learned from heartbreak. They haven't sort of really been knocked to the ground, gotten up and saying, well, I don't want that to happen again. Let me look in the mirror and see if I can adjust my life and how I approach these things. What will I say no to now? What are the only things I'll say yes to now? And things like that. Um, so there's not much of that. Not not for other people. I mean, it works both ways. Like it's not so much what women think, but it's kind of kind of how you think. It's do you want a happy life if you choose to be with a female? Then choose choose better. Um, reject what you don't want any, have to uh, you don't want anything to do with even if it's kind of like well i'm just going to kind of um uh you know pump and dump and i don't care but if this whole i don't care transient um something better's always around the corner mentality means you're always starting from zero and um i don't find it very satisfying uh, and i don't really look this is all the younger generations used to uh this 
new millennial internet generation. So they're listening to people like me thinking, oh, how quaint. It's like they're watching an old history channel. But um, let me tell you, it was a lot simpler, less choices, a lot more straightforward. People kept their word. Uh, if you didn't, your friends and your social group would out you and your reputation would be ruined. But now your reputation doesn't need to be ruined. You can hook up with someone an hour out of your city. No one will ever know. You can leave multiple lives. So it's a very fragmented, distracted way of living. And no wonder, as Boffin said, um, how can stable adulthood ever be gotten? I mean, guy or girl. So speaking from a guy's point of view, a woman who lives in today's environment in this big candy store when you never have to grow up, why would any man with half a brain uh, commit to this kind of childish mind to be the mother of their children, to help be one of the pillars of a family or a long-term relationship? You wouldn't. Um, if you respect yourself, your family's raised you right, um, you're trying to be responsible, you as such, would be responsible also in the people you pick or, more importantly, don't pick. And a lot of guys aren't picking a hell of a lot of women. Uh, thanks for the super chat donation, Jose. His comment is, what do you think about my theory that relationships between men and women are the way they are today because they are no because they no longer need each other? Yeah, that's, that's pretty... I, I wouldn't disagree with that, Jose. Um, they don't. When you don't look at anything between human beings or even individually, it's not even between human beings. If the society encourages you to be lazy, you don't need to do anything, right? Um, so you don't have to eat healthy. You don't have to be intelligent. You don't have to be disciplined. You don't have to do a lot of stuff. And so people don't. The only pe time people start doing the right thing is when pain hits their doctor gives them a diagnosis where they need to get fit. Um, the walls hit a woman. Uh, you know, they, they get to midlife and, and the party's over. They can't date like a, like a teenager anymore. And they're scrambling to have a family where the last 5% of their eggs are barely, you know, healthy. And they're crossing their fingers whether or not they can have a kid. It's just a whole lot of factors all of a sudden reality hits. Reality doesn't care. Nature doesn't care. You only, you don't want to care about nature? Fine. Uh, she doesn't care about you either. So, uh, hey, Mr. Highway, good to see you again. Yeah, hit the like button, guys, and hit subscribe. It's free. doesn't cost you a thing. Um, helps me out. Let's... Uh, Let's try and get the channel over 100,000 if we can. <clears throat> uh, Blackmagic1087 says, Human, did you ever have an opportunity to date outside your cultural, European, uh, Asian, etc.? If, if not, any regrets? I've dated all sorts. Um, and pretty much... Look, you're comfortable with who you're comfortable with, and I've met nice people from a lot of parts of the world. I found the hardest to get along with um, Irish women, I think, or Scottish. They're nice enough, but being able to click with humor with me, because I, I'm, I've got European blood. Uh, Irish, I found, I remember in university when I'd hang out with my friends from uni, we'd go to pubs and things. And it was so difficult to get along, even try and date an Irish or Scottish or so, that region of the world. Um, it's not just the, the inflection in the, in the sort of language, it's, or the way they speak. It's every time I joked, they thought I was serious. Every time they thought I, I was being serious, they thought I was joking. It was always this disjointed kind of saying, no, no, I was, I was joking. And it's like, ah, oh, ha, 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 uh, ha. So it was really awkward. I found that easiest um, to get along with European women, especially Mediterranean. So whether it's Greek, Italian, uh, Balkan, Russian, 
um, middle Europe kind of thing. Uh, I found it always a lot easier, uh, probably because of my heritage. And generally, I've, I've dated uh, women from a lot of different nationalities. Um, but mostly, it's probably something in the DNA, I suppose, that you can't deny. Am I in focus? It doesn't look like it. Anyway. Remember, guys, if you want to ask a question, put some emojis uh, around your text in the super chat. Uh, Mr. Highway asks, would you say that the primary disease of a modern woman is hedonism? They remind me of the old Roman nobles being fed grapes to glutton. Uh, yeah, the whole world's like that, I think. Um, even guys, I know that when I start getting serious and disciplining myself, even in my hobbies and things I enjoy doing, my the things that give me uh, joy and a smile and my routines, take take fun seriously too. And I think that works for a man a lot better. I mean, again, what can you do with women today? Uh, they run the world and they, most of them want to act like children. And you are seen as the enemy. So the last person they want to hear anything from is you. So the best you can do is work on yourself. The best way a, a guy can make himself um, self happier is to take his fun seriously. And in so doing that, organizes his life. Um, so organizing your life, I've always found, found is a big help. So take care of number one, and then everything else, including the people you care about in your life, will be taken care of. Um, you'll spend good quality time. It'll be reciprocal. Uh, there'll be cooperation. But trying to kind of herd the cats of women out there for their own good when they don't want to listen, and they, they've got the candy store in front of them, why should they discipline themselves? That sounds like hard work. It's like, a, um, it's like you're talking to a supermodel and trying to tell them, look, I know you've got riches, fame, money, celebrity status. You've got everything you want. But, you know, why don't you try meditation? Why don't you try minimalism? Why don't you give away money because it's not important? And they're having a ball. And um, their philosophies, they're great. What's really going to force them? The only thing that forces them is if over every generation, enough women hit the wall and experience enough pain where their daughters, the next generation, rebel and go, I'm not going to be like mum. Mum has an awful life. I never got along with mum. Mum was grumpy. Mum hated men. Mum, like, I don't want that life. It was awful. So that's about the only way I can see it happening. Uh, so the only thing guys can do, I think, realistically, is just to make their own life better. There's no reason to hate on women or anyone or the world because you're just swinging at air. You can't affect anything. You can't affect your proximal life, which is the most important thing. So, yeah, sure, blame where blame is due. If your ex shafted you um yeah if something was her fault it was for her fault if women talk badly to you they talk badly to you but it's all about you not tolerating rubbish anymore and crossing your fingers that well maybe if i just tolerate it a bit she'll come around and she'll have a bit of sympathy and then she'll be a better human being no in again in this big candy store made for women forget it um keep your bubble small um only letting people that over time have proven trust uh, be a sensible organized guy uh, your life will be a lot better uh, key himself thank you very much for the super chat um, <laughs> he says forget marriage sell approaching women to me yeah it used to be i made a video sell marriage to me in terms of like when i got a lot of these comments from traditionalists uh talking about well you need to be married and god says this um it's like try like sell even talking to a lot of women and their 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 religion their religion of a woman today you can't get through that barrier you can't even talk to them as a as a calm sensible human being yeah i know there's <clears throat> there's um good women out there so few but the way life is now um who's got the time to search in through that needle in a haystack uh, this is the problem um, the, the women that don't understand me, it's that I, I don't dis, I don't hate women at all. It's guys are frustrated. They try and try and do the right thing, and they realise they're operating in you know old black and white chivalrous mode. Um, 
And women are these new progressive futuristic, I can do anything. I don't have to make a sandwich. I don't have to make, I don't have to put a smile on my man's face. That's offensive. He should just be happy with me being around. But you, you have to do a lot to put a smile on her face and that bar's going up. So that incompatibility is, guys just kind of, I think guys today, uh, it's not so much that they're uh, angry at women. It's kind of like, it's like, I can't be bothered. Um, the standards are ridiculous and us having any common ground, any rules or values that we can both agree on and say, okay, this is my lane, this is your lane and let's stay out of each other's lane, but then let's cooperate the way men and women always have from the beginning of time in a general way. It's like, nah, women are independent, men are independent and somehow we're going to pull each other like two horses uh, trying to pull something apart in the middle, never coming together, always pulling each other apart and seeing who can drag the other person their way. That's no way to live because even if you drag someone your way, like a lot of guys do, they say yes to women temporarily, right? After a couple of months, the 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 limerence phase, the honeymoon phase, phase uh, fades. One of the people that's been dragged the other person's way because they like them a lot, all of a sudden says, oh, hang on, I've woken up. This isn't my life. You really annoy me. I've given so much or I've, done, I've said yes to you and this has been the mode of our relationship. I'm tired of this. I can't live my entire life just being dragged around by my neck by you. Um, sorry. And then the breakup begins. Uh, lucid dream MGTOW, do you meditate? Um, rarely. I tried. It doesn't... My mind's very active. Uh, the times that... The, the meditation that helps me is breathing meditation to slow my heart rate. So let me explain. Um, sometimes when I can't go to sleep and... Um, I can tell that I'm awake and it's annoying me. I want to, I want to sleep. Um, I do breathing exercises, um, which is a form of meditation just to slow my heart rate down and then I can sleep better. Um, so that's the kind of meditation I do. Uh, otherwise, yeah, I suppose when you look at it, meditation is a way of kind of clearing your head and uh, calming you down and, um, uh, quieting the world and things like that. So when I go to on walks, jogs, um, I have a lot of solitary moments where I write and do things with that. It is very meditative uh, when I draw as well, when I do art. So I do do it, but maybe not in traditional sort of um, popular ways. Uh, Alpha Dog Affirmations, what is the current state of masculinity in regards to men embodying the characteristic, characteristics of manhood and is it impacting societal direction? That's a big question. That's an umbrella question. That's a forest for the trees question. What's the current state of masculinity? Well, it's not very much resembling anything of our fathers and forefathers. Uh, men are almost invisible in terms of voice and even um, being seen or heard or existing. We're an annoying thing that just doesn't want to do what it's told today. It's uh, very different from the respect and the authority men had uh, in previous generations, which, look, look at the world today. You can't blame it on men. Um, and the naive people that go, well, look at the, pe the main people in charge. Yeah, you got people that are responsible for jobs that um, have a lot of responsibility, like, you know, prime minister, CEO, and so forth. But um, look beneath them, who you're allowed to, you know, they, there's a saying, if you want to know who rules over you, simply look at who you're not allowed to speak up against. The ruling class is women today. So from the bottom Right just before the ruling class, 99% of the world is uh, ruled by women's um, rule book, their religion, what you can say, what you can't say, who you're supposed to make feel well, who we care about, who we don't care about. So take a look at the world today. Who do we care about? Who don't we care about? Who can you speak up against? Um, me. You can speak up against me. That's the people you can speak up against. 
who are the goddesses you can't say a word about and you can only shower them with adoration and flowers and praise? Women. Women are ruling the world. Um, so masculinity is uh, sort of um, underground at the moment. Um, embodying the old school characteristics of manhood, basically now it's an individual task with as many men willing to seek out guys like us to have just normal conversations about what it is to be a guy and how to put your moral philosophy together and how to be ethically um, more responsible and stable in your life for your own good, you know? You, you, and look, guys can't fix society before they fix themselves. So right now, a lot of guys are broken, confused. They can't find their place in life. They've grown up with single mothers for a few generations. It's really, really broken. So, and is it impacting societal direction? Yeah, you bet. Um, look, again, look at society now. Remember guys, if you've got any questions, make sure you highlight them with some emojis. Uh, Black Magic 1087 says, looking back on your past relationships, we always assume we can improve in the next one. So how many times can you refine yourself before you hit the pinnacle and not grow dreary without the same dating results? Basically, it's desire. Uh, when men lose desire, or as I like to put it, there's only so much fuel in the romantic chasing women wanting them tank. Uh, when that runs out, it runs out. And, and women can get as angry as they want. But once you get to middle age and beyond and you've you've tried with different women in different ways and then you objectively see that you, the, the reasons why it didn't work a lot of times were objectively, it wasn't you. It was that the other person just kept pushing and pushing and wanting things their way and they didn't care about you and they didn't reciprocate kindness when you needed it. Um, um, because guys are fine with giving... Uh, if they, if the person, if the woman treats them well, guys are get, fine giving most of the effort. You know, I said I've, I've, I don't require a lot. It, I can take care of myself, but in terms of the respect and how a woman treats me and supports me when I need her as a woman in the in my life, and the the, the things that I need a woman for in my life, which isn't very much. Guys are fairly self sufficient. But there's only small parts of. Uh, a man's life where a man really appre uh, of a, a man's life where a man really appreciates a woman that if he doesn't even get that if he doesn't get that 20% that's essential it's not a lot but when he needs it it's very important it's the vital reasons why he's with a woman whereas a woman needs a lot of constant sort of stuff um, the average woman so if he gets absolutely nothing except shame 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 if that's the only stick by which a woman can keep you there it's like a job that um, treats you worse, 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 and pays you less, less, less. Uh, if a woman could just see it in terms of that, that simple equation, um, you get into a job that pays well, then quickly over time they treat you worse and pay you less and less, and after a while they don't pay you a thing. I mean, it's pretty quick when you, you start to kind of self-reflect and say, why the heck am I going to this job? It's just routine. I'm not getting anything out of this. I am not happy at all. I'm wasting my life. And again, women will try and shame you because shame is about the only tactic most women have. And they'll say, well, you tr you can't treat me like a job. Love is more than that. Yeah, yeah. Nice try, sweetheart. It's like, no, um, you're not the only ones. You're not the only one where your feelings, you know, you have needs. I have needs too. I don't have as many as you. And if you can't even give me some of them back, if you can't give me a little bit of what I want, like why the heck am I here? Human drink green tea for 88 Goy says. Way ahead of you, man. I'm drinking green tea at the moment. I'm not drinking coffee. Eric Wade says, good women are as rare as albino orcas. I think I did a video. I actually, I, I had a saying where I said, uh, it's easier to find a good book than a good woman. Uh, and I think these days, yeah, uh, a good book is probably too easy a metaphor. It has to be something even rarer today. And especially the older you get, it's already hard for guys who are younger. It was hard for my generation and before the nervousness to actually approach women and all the normal stuff that goes along with um, getting together with women. 
you got guys with experience now where with me, I don't find it hard talking to people, women. I don't find them scary. I'm not intimidated. I don't find it scary to uh, talk to a woman or um, uh, when I was dating, I wasn't sort of scared to approach a woman when I got older. It's very, it was very, there's nothing to fear anymore. The fact that like you got no, the nervousness is gone, but there's nothing to approach. There's nothing for me to want to approach anymore. This is the scary thing today. And it's happening with young guys in the prime of their hormonal drive. They want women and they're still saying no. There's nothing there. They're awful. What what for? What am I getting out of this? And if the only stick you've got is to shame men and saying, oh, how dare you say what's in it for you? That's so offensive. It's well, okay, well, I won't even talk to you anymore. I can't be rational. I want at least, I want to get something from this. If I'm in a conversation, um, you want to speak and they speak. You, you want at least things going back and forth. But if you're told your relationship is only a one-way conversation, it's like, no, you sit there with your mouth closed, uh, eyes wide open, and you just keep nodding and you keep saying yes to everything. Uh, a person doesn't want to exist that, that way because part of life is that you, for you to know you exist and to enjoy life is to you express yourself in word, in action. So you want to matter. You want to talk. You want to be heard. Uh, you want to um, express yourself. If you're with someone where the expression only comes from their end, you're invisible. You don't feel alive. You don't feel happy. You don't feel fulfilled. You don't feel heard. Um, you don't feel good about waking up. Um, you don't feel good about your life. Uh, at the end of the day, life wants to survive and the life within you at some point will get frustrated and pop and you don't want to be with those kind of people. Uh, and again, I can understand fully why a lot of guys don't want to even be bothered with women today because they demand so much and give almost zero. That's why I say that a good barometer is to be around people that seem like friends or they exude qualities that a friend would. Women or platonic, uh, whatever relationships you have, even your job. Do you feel good? Uh, the people there you, that you work with, are they good? Um, bear it down to simplicity. Uh, Pair it down to simple things like that. Try and um, pare down your perspective to sim simple ways like that that work across a lot of uh, a lot of uh, areas. So you don't have to remember too much. So, um, sort of a uh, no, I can't even think now. Um, sort of like. Um, Think of things uh, so you can always tattoo in your brain one mode of thinking. So if you think all my relationships have to feel good or all the people I relate to have to resemble friends. So it doesn't matter if you meet a woman you like, a friend you're with, um, you're at work, the people you hang around with, bosses. Does your workplace resemble a friendly environment? Do you enjoy hanging out at work and going to work? Do you enjoy hanging out and going to friends or lovers? Uh, things like that. Keep it simple. Keep your philosophy simple. So you don't have to remember 50 different philosophies fragmented uh, amongst all these different parts of your life. Make your life simple. Make your life clearer. Uh, Brattles, try a float tank human. If you're happy sitting with your own thoughts, you'll benefit from it. Highly recommended. Yeah, I've done that. It's really, really cool. Um, what I didn't like, I got salt in my eyes in the um, in the float tank and it started to irritate me. But initially, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I've been meaning to do it again one day, but it's not cheap to do it regularly.
sound, no sound, no audio. Okay. Hello, can you hear me? What happened there? Something's going on with my audio. Ah, man. Sorry, guys. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, my apologies. What did I do? Let me see. And then I put it on. I must have kept the mute on accidentally because I think I muted myself temporarily because I coughed and I didn't unmute it and I thought I did. <laughs> well, I was just talking to myself like I was making a video and no one was listening. Uh, look at all this. All these comments are no sound, no sound, can't hear you, no sound, audio cut out. I'm really sorry, guys. Uh, Michael, uh, thank you very much for the uh, super chat. He says, turn 25 this month. I realize guys will put their money where their mouth is and women just say, I don't pay on the first date. That's right. That's a good way to look at it. Men will actually show that they care. Women keep saying, I, I did a video a while ago, which I think was a really nice short video. Uh, men act, women promise to. So women will always promise to like, no, you go first, man. Uh, and then later, I promise I'll reciprocate. And a man keeps doing and acting and showing and paying and doing all this stuff. And it's always later he's going to get this reward that she promises. You know, I don't cook, but, you know, when I get married, I'm going to be the best wife. How come you're not the best person now, sweetheart? Uh, so, yeah, uh, women will promise a lot. Uh, don't buy it. If they don't act the way you appreciate and um, uh, you want them to act when you're dating them, they're not going to change. That's the way they are. <laughs> uh, look at all these messages. No audio, human. No audio. Okay. All right, let me go through all these. Um, <laughs> Most of the messages are about no sound. Uh, CJ, thank you for the super chat. Um, yeah, no sound. I appreciate it, man. Um, I apologize. My bad, C. You won't hear many women say that. My fault. Yeah. Well, at least I was only muted for about five minutes. I suppose I would have seen it eventually. Okay. Uh, please repeat any questions. Any you got. I mean, I'm going through the chat and I'm looking through any questions uh, that don't have to do with me not having any sound going. <laughs> Someone says Australian censorship. Blame it on feminism. No. Uh, yeah, Mr. Highway says a one-man production crew can't be perfect. Uh, this is the thing. I, I don't... There's a first for everything. You know, I've... This is the first time I've done something like this where I've hit the mute button and I didn't unmute it. Um... All right. Yeah, I can't remember what I was talking about, guys. It was just a stream of consciousness. That's the other thing. I don't want to be too conscious about my gear. I just want to talk to you guys. <laughs> Repeat the last five minutes. I can't remember what I was saying. Probably, um, I, I feel like I was blabbing anyway, so it's, it was probably nothing too important. Um, but yeah, I'll give you an extra five minutes, guys. <laughs> <laughs> on top, I owe you. 
Uh, Travis, uh, thank you for the super chat. He says, a helpful point you made for men who date. Judge a woman's reaction to you when you need a favor. If she expresses annoyance, she needs to go. Exactly. Um, the first reaction of someone who likes you is to say yes to something you want, especially being needed. Um, the, the ability to want to express that you care about a person, that's a natural good reaction. Think about your friends where you go out and it's like, I'll buy a drink. No, I'll buy a drink. I'll get the pizza. No, I'll get the pizza. You fight in an affectionate way. You want to give. You don't want the other person to give. You want to show affection. You want to pay. You want to do something. You want to drive. You want to whatever. But if a woman gets offended at, uh, you notice she does nothing except sit there um, and she thinks she's royalty. And um, the moment you ask for something small, she gets annoyed or you express uh, you expect reciprocity at least or fairness because you notice it's only a one-way street. Yeah, leave. She needs to go. Um, you're better off alone. Be around people that are fair and reciprocal. Fairness, guys. Uh, be around a fair person. And fairness is, um, if you don't pretend to like each other, you have to actually like each other and show each other. Uh, William O'Neill. Uh, thank you for the super chat. He says, he says we, we now know what it sounds like in a sensory deprivation tank. <laughs> ah, yeah. Okay, I know, my fault. Uh, Lucid Dream... MGTOW says, what's your response when they tell you reprodu reproduction is the meaning of life? Yeah, look, biologically, we're here. We exist to reproduce. That's our purpose, really. Your individual purpose, that's another thing. Because if you, if you get rid of all the structures in the world, like they got rid of religion, they got rid of um, social structures, they got rid of the structures and the rules between men and women, how we got along, how we'd need to cooperate, all right, now we're all individuals. Okay, the only thing left to do before, un, un, you know, unless we're going to tear each other apart, is to be re, uh, re, philosophically responsible for our own moral philosophy. So, unless you want to do that, well, if you guys don't want to do that, you can eat each other. I'm going to be responsible for myself. Um, that's the only way my life's going to be better. Am I going to rely on you? Uh, and I'm, I'm going to rely on gynocentrism to make the world better. <laughs> I don't think so. I'm not that dumb. Uh, I've only got one life. If I wait around for women to fix the world, like they, they're in charge, but they're still wanting men to fix the world while men aren't in charge. You know, if I'm waiting on that psychotic world to make life better, forget it. Um, my li life's too short. I'll make my own li life good. Thank you. And uh, you guys can wallow in your own in your own feces. Uh, those back pages. We miss the new glasses. <laughs> okay, I'll put them back on. There you go, a bit of entertainment to make up for the muting. Someone mentioned before, uh, yeah, Elwiz says, do you know Stefan Molyneux? Yeah, I followed him a fair bit when he was on um, YouTube. Uh, unfortunately, he got um, banned. He was really, really good. Uh, whenever I remember, I try and jump onto um, Odyssey to watch him because he's there. Um, I, I highly recommend him. He talks about like a lot, a broad range of topics, but when he's philosophically talking about uh, social dynamics, men and women, how we relate, um, uh, uh, very practical, moral, and ethical things. Um, he's really, really highly attuned, that guy. Um, and he's really great at expressing himself. A very intelligent guy. So, um, yeah, go check out Stefan Molyneux. Okay, have I caught up with um, the questions? 
I, I, I'm not muted anymore, guys. I'm pretty sure of that. My level's everywhere. I'm looking at my mixer. I'm looking at my Streamlabs. Um, I'm looking everywhere. And uh, my levels are flickering, so I'm all good. Pink glasses. They're not pink. They're, they're clear. Al, Al uh, Alevich. Uh, please talk about narcissistic women. Uh, that's uh, most women, isn't it? I talk about that. It's pretty much uh, whenever I talk about women, that's what I talk about. I don't know what specifically about the average woman do you want me to talk about? <laughs> Uh, Hannah 28, Aaron Clary did the cost benefit analysis of pursuing women in the book of numbers. The odds are extremely low and the cost is in the millions over a lifetime. Is the pursuit worth it? Again, personal stuff. Again, is anything worth it, right? Life's too short. Um, uh, and, and the way you go about anything. So is uh, drawing worth it for me? It depends on what I, uh, how I value it, what I want to get out of it. If I feel like I'm wasting my time, it is. But if I'm getting what I want out of it, it's not wasting your time. And it's also how you approach it, um, how you exercise yourself through it. So it's no different with women. If you go in it blindly, letting nature lead you, and you're just uh, led by your hormones and emotions in the same way you were when you were a teenager, then yeah, you're just going to keep making the same mistakes. But if you still find women interesting and you like their company... Um, Unless you do it more and more maturely and sensibly and not have anything to do with women that don't really fit in your lane, they're the only ones you will give the time of day to, then you're just going to keep falling into traps. You can look at statistics all you want, but if you don't have any standards by which you'll pick a woman um, to have anything to do with um, based on who you are, then you, you, it's, it's too easy to go on the math and go, well, all women are crap. Well, if your standards are zero, all women, all women will be crap because most women out there are. But if you're very discerning, you'll either, you won't find that woman, which is fine. You'll be happy on your own or that little door you leave open for your specific type of, type of woman that relates to your personality and your values and your ethics. If that's the only door that's open, at least that's sensible. And you're discerning that particular narrow woman uh, in a very focused way. But if it's kind of like being blind without glasses and, and sort of blaming the furniture uh, because you're running into it. Again, I'm not saying, you know, it's not women's fault and unicorns exist or anything like that, but it's kind of, come on, guys, like you got to be responsible for your choices or if you don't want to, don't choose women, fine. But you can't kind of say, I want women, all women are bad, they don't treat me nicely. And you kind of go, well, okay, let, let's talk about your ethics and values and choices and routines and how you structure your life and what you say yes and no to. Um, I don't want to look at that. I don't want to do anything. It's like, well, you're just going to be get, you're going to get what life throws at you then. So if you just, if you're just going to walk out there and you're going to take whatever life throws at you, you can't blame life. <laughs> Rodriguez says women who say that reproduction is life's purpose are com confessing they are no better than pigs they are just here to consume their lives I want a life of substance I want to be human uh, go about your life consciously guys and associate with people who are going about their lives consciously who are who are fair who you can see that they think about the important, simple, everyday, mundane things about life, how we treat each other, how we eat, how we stay healthy mentally and physically, what, are, what constitutes a good life, what friendship is, what's important to you, minimalism, just really uh, self-reflective, important stuff um, that's important in your bubble, you know, that's essential. But uh, people are, that are living there, out there in entertainment that are being... Uh, just led around by consumerism and social media. Like, forget them. Q 
Okay, let me go down some of the questions. Some of the guys, some of your questions about the future, it's kind of, it's interesting, but like, I mean, what's the point? You know, what do you think will happen in the future with this? What do you think about technology with this? What do you think? It's like, okay, but it's kind of avoiding you. I, I like to focus on very, uh, pardon the pun, human problems because you fix your very personal human problems, how you see things, how you do things, what you will and won't tolerate. Everything becomes clearer. Then you can worry about, you know, whether I want to have a sex doll uh whether or not i want to have anything to do with women in general like get yourself right everything becomes clearer james von maxwell he says you're live i can hear you just fine yeah before i was i um accidentally muted myself man uh and i was talking for five minutes and i just noticed the chat and everyone was going no sound no sound can't hear you mike 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 Um, Daniel says, do you think women even want men today? No, it doesn't act like they do. They say they do, but they don't act like they do. So I would say, no, they don't because your actions are the real truth of things. Even things about, um, your own life, people can say being healthy is important, but if you don't act toward health, you don't actually find health important. And I don't care what people cry about. It's the only way you're going to make your life better. You can say uh, women are this or that, but if you don't actually take action in the way you reject the women we, we complain about um, and only accept the good women, or unless you take action in terms of eating healthy um, or exercising, if you can realistically do those things comfortably, stop complaining about those things. Stop talking about what's right and wrong and start doing what's right and wrong, guys just for yourself so you can be happy and stop letting uh, sort of decades go by in this hamster wheel of women and men are like this or uh the world is like this my life is like this but when you kind of come down to it uh, if i talked one-on-one -on -one with you we were just having a conversation like two guys and we were joking and said you know man like really how have you been living your life the last few decades or what have you done what haven't you done what have you put up with um, yeah, start to do little things that make your life better, especially the way you think about things. Um, yeah, Daniel says, do you think women even want men with women filing 80% of divorces and the way I, uh, most women talk about their husband, it makes me think they don't. Yeah, most women don't. Um, they're, they're a spoiled rich kid. They just want everything their way and they just want to get, get, get. They don't want to give, give, give. And this is the, f the thing that women don't realize. They, they should actually realize this. They will feel loved when they give more in terms of the back and forth. They should realize this when they go to parties and they give presents. Uh, when they give a present to, to one of their girlfriends or children that they care about and everyone's smiling, the joy they get from actually giving and showing someone else they care, they need to remember that that works with anyone, boyfriend, husband, dog, uh, a job that you pick that you should like. The more you give towards the things that you say you care about, the more you get back from them. But if you stand there with your arms crossed and going like, no, just give me affection and love and I'm not going to give anything because I'm entitled, you just feel empty and more and more, uh, less and less loved. Uh, and women don't understand that uh, reciprocal nature of nature where you want to enjoy something, you've got to give. You want to get back, you've got to give. Uh, I want to enjoy the benefits of health. I've got to give to health and, and do a bit of work. And then it gives back to me. You know, it's a handshake. You can't have a handshake by you standing back and not touching anything. Uh, Corey uh, asks, do you instinctively know that you're a man? Do you feel more manly in the presence of a woman or the same? Interesting question. Um, I've cared less and less about myself as a man. I, I look at myself more as the individual. Like I'm human who happens to be a man. You know, I'm me who happens to be male. And the things I think import, are important, 
I speak, act them, and organize my life, and I try and portray the guy I want to be and who I'm proud to be and who I like being, and the result of that is, I, I suppose, a man that's respected or a man I can look in the mirror and um, be be respectful of and proud of and be happy and not regretful of. So it's more about who I am as an individual who happens to be a man. And then I think manliness or masculinity comes from those things being respected. You can't just be a man and then you don't care how you act, speak, or how you organize your life. You have to think about it. It's the, it's the cart before the horse kind of thing. Yeah, James uh, Von Maxwell says something important. He says, don't be scared of women. Just understand the absolute advantage that females have in the dating game. Just understand, yeah, understand reality. Understand where you are. And also um, get rid of fear, guys. Um, because you're just like living in fear in your own life. Um, maybe it's peculiar to my personality, but I don't like not being in control. I don't like the feeling of being afraid. And so anytime I do, I want to fix it. I want to get out of the fear space. And it's the same with women. Uh, in the past when I didn't know what to say to women, didn't know how to approach them, like I didn't like that insecurity. I like my life secure. I like it calm. I like it simple. Do whatever you can to make it that way. Uh, AO Log says, human, what's your opinion on marriage being useful to climb the corporate ladder? Do you think it's worth it in the long run? Yeah, you can sacrifice your your, your life to a, a big role, like a um, big goal. Like if you want to be president of the United States, you have to be married. Um, so you can do things if your goal is more important than your proximal life. I enjoy the, the, the momentary... Uh, aspects of my life that keep repeating themselves and going forward and that's growth and that's a life to me whereas people are always fo uh, forward focused that's how they're driven i'm driven proximally most people uh, a lot of people who are career driven goal driven are, dri are driven um, distally i've always been driven proximally which is why i'm probably i'm more suited as a creative type i get a lot of things done because i, I enjoy waiting in that warm bath of creativity, what I'm doing. The result isn't as important as the moment for me. Um, okay, let me see. Any more questions? Uh, Damien, he says, human, one book that made a vast impact on your life. Um, Ayn Rand's The Virtue of Selfishness and... Jim Goad's book, SHIT Magnet, uh, both for different different ways. Uh, Jim Goad's book for how he thinks and his writing, so purely from a writer's point of view, from a from a way of thinking, um, just by the the style of his writing. He's not largely philosophical. He's just kind of um, it was just like a, a splash of cold water on my face as a writer and a, and a person who appreciates books. Ayn Rand, philosophically speaking, if that's what you're asking in terms of probably why people watch my channel, uh, The Virtue of Selfishness. Read that book. That was really refreshing. Super Noise. Human, how many women do you know that are worth marrying? Assume the government actually had fair laws for divorce. Um, in my life, probably only a handful. I can maybe count them on one hand. And the vast majority are, are happily married or are in long-term relationships. Jake said, you said you are okay with being bald once you put on some weight. Did you notice any difference with women once you filled out? Yeah, I did. But also it's kind of... One of those cliche things where you feel good about the way you look, it kind of translates. You don't notice, but in your micro expressions and the way you carry yourself, how you talk, when you really don't care about something, like I don't care about balding at all. I actually like having a shaved head. Um, 
when you think your appearance is cool, when you think how you think is cool, how you express yourself is cool, when I really think my opinions are cool and uh, the people I engage with are cool. Um, when you're in that relaxed mode, it translates you're freer. Um, so there's a lot to do with that. You can't pretend... Like you see a lot of women, especially the ones who Botox and they're kind of nervously trying to look good and attractive. And uh, for me, they, you know, I think a lot of guys look at them like the way a lion looks at like a helpless deer. They don't look like women you really want to spend your life with. They look like just women you want to devour now because you're hungry and they're helpless. So, yeah, I don't know many women that are worth marrying today. Not very many at all. Okay, I just figured out what the problem was. I just went to mute again. My temporary mute button doesn't come back on. That is really weird. It used to before. It must be something to do, to do with my software. It works so well. I'm using a Go XLR Mini. And uh, it works so well at the start. Now I need to... It, it switches off for no reason. If I do the smallest little adjustment, it resets a lot. Although I have updated it. I don't know what the problem is at the moment. Yeah, make sure you uh, subscribe and hit the like button, guys. It's free. Helps me out. Uh, let's get the channel over 100,000 if we can. Hannah 28 says, I get women that tell me they're done with the party years and want to settle now, late 20s. Do they ever change? Is it unfair to not overlook their past when they change? Again, yeah, don't look at how they act, not what they say. A lot of women want to change. My my ex was an example of that. She was always um, partying. Uh, she never really had long-term relationships. And she came to a point later in her life, like when we were older, we met. And she was like, I've had enough of that. I want to you know, I want to have a serious relationship. Mind you, like I wasn't going to get married or move in or anything like that. But um, she was intelligent and I thought, no, she's being serious. But then as we dated, I started to kind of see like, no, you, you've never been used to dating. You don't, you don't know, you don't have any exercise, you don't have any muscles to exercise um, this kind of relationship with. You spent most of your life being one kind of girl. And uh, it's almost impossible, no, ma no matter how much you want. Again, I go back to dieting or health. If you've been unhealthy for most of your life, it's very, very hard now to, to muster the will to just want to change. Unless fear kicks in and um, your doctor gives you a bad diagnosis, then you have to, right? But if it's just choice, if it's just like, oh, I want to give this a, ch a chance, I want to give a serious relationship a shot because it seems interesting. Most people revert back to what's easy. If easy is just being free and single and jumping from one person to another, people will just go back to that mode because it's what it's what they're familiar with. Human beings are pattern machines. We, we go back to familiarity. If you spend most of your life being in the rotation of familiar hookups, then no matter how much you want a serious relationship, uh, your internal mode of uh, working will always resist it. The moment you relax, you'll go back to your old, old reflexes. And that's the hard thing. You want to be relaxed in a relationship. But if you relax and your relaxed mode is going back to single transient hookup, I can do whatever I want. I can move wherever I want. Um, no one tells me what to do. Um, it's always about me. I never have to consider anyone else. Then, yeah, uh, I wouldn't believe what women tell you. It's it's perfectly fine to look at their past, but listen to how they speak about it. Do they have remorse? Have they learnt lessons? Have, can they reflect on their past? Spend enough time with this new woman who's seen the light and wants to have a serious relationship spend enough time that it's not just talk and you can actually see it practiced in um, your relationship with her. Otherwise, right from the get-go, women will sell you 
the best, you know, a, a marketed version of themselves. Every woman will tell you they're the best. How many go- uh, women have guys gone out with on the on the first date? And it's like, she's attractive and she's telling me she's such a kind person. She's traditional. She treats men well. I can't understand how this person's single. Yeah, spend enough time with her and you know exactly why she's single. It's all talk. There are, there are car salesmen wanting you to buy the car. You know, they women are trying to sell you themselves because you're the one buying. Um, you're asking them out. Like they say, um, they've got to say yes to you uh, in, a, in, in that kind of way. So you go into the car yard looking to buy a car. They're trying to sell you themselves. So they'll say anything. Yeah, look at their actions. Who cares what women say? Women say a lot of things to themselves and then they change their mind tomorrow. Pay attention to um, what they say, how they act now with you. Spend enough time with them so you trust that what they say matches how they act. Uh, most women aren't ethical if we, we remind ourselves that ethics are based on action. It's not just what you philosophically say or want. You have to practice your philosophy, what you say. Uh, so women can say, I'm nice, but if they never show that they're nice, they're not nice. So make sure that she's ethical. And you only do that by spending enough time with her. Hydrostatic, uh, thank you very much for the super chat. <laughs> uh, I appreciate it, man. Samuel says, my wife blows up at me regularly for no good reason and says, sorry, I've run out of patience a long time ago. What can I say to her to get her, her head on straight? Um, I don't know if you can do something that's because I suppose if she just sees that you always accept her apology and there's never any consequences, maybe, I don't know if you can take a small step to show her that you're serious. Um, but but if you keep saying, look, if you keep blowing up at me, that's it. I'm leaving or I'm going to take this action, but you never do. Um, she'll just keep doing it. Um, so it's like a child or a dog. Uh, if you, or, or even you, uh, you won't better yourself unless there's a reason to, she's not going to better herself unless there's a reason to. So I don't know what you can do. I'm not saying that you need to leave her, but you need to do something where you can show you're not bluffing. At least take a step in that direction. Whatever you think, uh, you've probably got a few things in mind. Maybe, hopefully you do, but show her realistically that when she does it, um, next time you're not just going to forgive her. Um, Say, I don't know, um, I'm trying to think. That's it. I've had enough. I'm going to stay at Joe's place and you stay at your friend's place for a week. Something you've never done to kind of shock her into thinking, no, this is serious and tell her the next time I'm not coming back. Uh, So uh, take a step in the direction that's actually showing that uh, you're not bluffing anymore. Some of these questions, guys, uh, I don't have an answer, so that's why I'm not going to read them. Sorry. I'm just going to be saying I have no idea. Just a guy says, going with your feeling for impulse, not thinking things through isn't smart. But what when but what when it's a matter of dignity to go with your feeling, even when it's not of your immediate best interest? If it doesn't um, permanently, if it temporarily is going to not do much to to your life, like it's not going to have any long-term effects momentarily, it's probably the best thing to do in the situation. You feel like doing it. It's not a big loss to you. Fine. But if it's going to ruin your life, you know, you're going to resent it later. No. Yeah. Thomas says the advantage of mutual goals kind of do help. Yeah, they do.
uh rodriguez says human after taking the red p-i-l-l and seeing through the theatrics of women did they become less appealing to you yes women just seem so mechanical to me now yeah when you when you kind of um when you take away all the window dressing um and you're you're kind of saying yeah yeah i know what you're like naked but i can't actually have a rela i can't be around a person for very long just when you're naked there needs to be a lot more than that there needs to be a personality there that i get along with um yeah women get very boring um when you see the reality of the way um uh many of them don't actually even like guys it's kind of like why am i even around this person Um, okay, let me quickly skim down. Lucid Dream, Mictow, have you heard Herman Hess? Yes. Khalil Gibran, yes. I haven't read their stuff, but I've um, heard about them and read snippets. Herman Hess is more of a novelist than Khalil, Khalil Gibran, I think, is like more of a philosophical spiritual writer i think i think he still writes novels though he still writes fiction i haven't read any of their books though uh some of these questions guys it's always about stuff out there it's not about you it's like what do you think about this what do you think about the government what do you think about this religion what do you think about i don't know <laughs> i can speculate but then again so can you Um, lights down, drop to 500 or less human. You are washed out a bit. There we go. All right, let me, um, get onto some of the comments from a couple of videos. Remco schedule the skull says um, on my video why men and women don't care relationships over 30 he says 42 here and I dodged more bullets than Neo I thought that was funny uh, Jordan P on my video she's only happy when you make her feel special uh, this is the uh, I made the video recently about pay attention to when you only enjoy being around her when you treat her like a celebrity he said, uh, X gave me hell for almost a month because I told her I was going to get her jewelry from Amazon for her birthday. She thought Amazon was all fake Chinese stuff. Almost a thousand dollars later, she still didn't fix herself and now uses Amazon more than me. Did I mention she's my ex? JJ on she's only happy when you make her feel special. Same video. He says, even a favor repeated often enough will become an expectation and then an obligation. And should you stop it, you are the bad guy for having dared take it away, even though it was a favor to begin with. Yeah. Be careful of doing favor after favor after favor, guys, because that will become the norm with women. Uh, make sure your normal behavior is who you really are. And don't just be chivalrous and always do good things outside of your normal paradigm. Uh, Eric W, um, my video, are you falling into relationships? And this is about all kinds of relationships. I've got to fix this microphone. It keeps shutting off. Um, Eric says, falling in love in 2021, is that anything like falling into a wood chipper? It is really challenging, uh, the amount of guys that, and this is the whole thing, when people kind of shame guys, oh, you just talk about women and relationships. This is a, a big issue that everyone tries to shame everyone else out of and tells people to just shut up and just go into this wood chipper 
and just have a relationship. It's like, no, I don't want to. I want to have a good relationship. I don't want to jump into this wood chipper. Um, James R on the same video. You made me think about something that I've never considered. We stumble into almost everything during, during childhood. Our family, our country, our language, our school, etc. Almost everything is handed to us and we adopt it. Making an, an active choice is almost non-existent for the first 18 years of your life. It's no surprise that we don't make conscious decisions on who we want to be in a relationship with. This is um, a good point. Everything is given to you unless you're, until you're adult enough to start making your decisions. But if the world and everyone has been holding your hand and doing things for you, and handing, things, handing your script to you, and then all of a sudden, without the male rituals of yesteryear, without um, them slowly helping you be an adult, everything's given to you. Then all of a sudden when you're 18, it's like, well, now you can drive, now you can date, now you can make babies. How do I do it? I don't know. Just go with your feelings. It's a very good point. Everything is handed to us. Um, and so when you get to 18, you're not exercised in making any kind of uh, mature choice. You're not exercised in responsibility. Uh, Chris... Oh, hang on. Sorry. I'm going around. Uh, coaching for today says, are you falling into relationships? Uh, he was talking about that video. Society can take away from San uh, t take away my Santa Claus, my tooth fairy, my hope that somehow the good guy is always finds a way to win. And even my former belief that being nice to women was the right thing to do. But to take away the randomness of some of the most precious moments of my life would be to diminish the depth of my experience as would take away the worst random moments. My logic needs the balance of those rare moments of mystery that have come with unexpectedly falling in love. Without them, the worst days would have been unbearable. This is, uh, unfortunately, uh, we get stimulated by surprise and adventure as well. So if everything's really formulated, we don't get a lot of that benefit. The trick is to minimize risk. So... Try and uh, be smart enough that you're taking recoverable risks where you kind of look at, okay, what's the worst thing that can happen here realistically? If the worst thing that can happen and realistically happen is something really bad, don't do it. But uh, we need to, more and more men are getting into complete safety and they're feeling um, pretty empty as a result. You need some sort of adventure and um, you need boundaries but within those boundaries, then you can have the randomness and risk uh, without risking your whole life. So that's an important point that um, the random experiences that you're not logical about also add to your life. They make you see different perspectives. Um, they surprise you. They, they make you experience life that you otherwise wouldn't have if you didn't take a chance. So they can give you perspective too. So that's a very good point too. Um, Chris N says, um, on my video, she's only happy when you make her feel special in terms of women who, uh, want to be treated like celebrities. And that's the only way you can actually enjoy being around them is when you're the fan and there's, they're the celebrity. He says, I now ask the question of every man who, uh, with problems, where's the woman as in, yeah, when a woman and when a man's having problems these days, it seems to be around women, which is again why I talk about women so much. Uh, and I th I thought it was interesting. It's also interesting to ask guys today: Are men's problem because of the lack of women, or do their problems have to do with women? Interesting. It's it, or it seems to be more and more about women: the lack of, or if they have them in their life at all. So even if they get women, they have problems. If they don't have women, they have problems. Uh, it's uh, very important. That's why to find out where you stand, what you want, what your values are, and then the woman you have or don't have becomes clearer. If you don't have any standards by which you will have a woman in your life, the question of women or no women becomes even harder and more vague and more frustrating.
Uh, Hannah 28 says, how do you develop meaningful relationships when most women perceive you as a commodity? Yep. Um, ask questions. Don't be afraid to say no, et cetera, et cetera. When you're around women, uh, don't be afraid to speak up. Uh, hang on one more quick, one more, um, comment on my last video. Uh, it was about an older video, uh, from the pulse. He said, uh, on my video, the red P I L L is not personal. The trap of the red P I L L objectivity. Uh, um, you definitely have to customize your life with the red P I L L going your own way is always going to be tough. We are naturally pair bonding back uh, pack animals. If all red P I L L does is teach men to have boundaries and self vision respect. It has done a whole lot more than the last three generations of fathers or lack of, uh, and the single mothers that come along with the lack of fathers. And for that, we should all be grateful. Yes, I agree. Let me go back to your comments here, guys, in the in the stream. Yeah, going back to Hanad's comment, how do you develop meaningful relationships when most women perceive you as a commodity? Um, they want you to fit in a, ro uh, in a role in their perfectly planned life. I find it hard to connect. Uh, she's so analytical. Say no. Yeah, but I want to say no. Keep beating on that drum, on that door. Say no when you want to say no. Ask questions when you want to ask questions. When you notice something about it, don't stay quiet because you don't want to offend her. Say what's on your mind. The person you want in your life will um, will kind of not get offended. You want you don't want a person that gets offended at every, everything. Um, speak your mind. That's the kind of person you want to be with. Who cares if they see you as a commodity? All you want really is that girl that matches you. And unless she comes around, you're fine being on your own. Don't say yes to, oh, well, any girl is better than my specific girl. No, it's not. <laughs> any girl is the worst kind of girl you can get in today's environment because none of them um, have any respectful rules by which they'll operate with a man. Our forefathers used to, men and women used to have boundaries by which they would relate to each other. A man would act a certain way and no further. A woman would act a certain way and no further. If socially, we would make it easier for us to get along. Now there's no rules. So you have to set your own standard. This is the kind of, this is the only kind of women I'll go with or even consider. Any other woman that comes into my vision, forget it. You have to discipline yourself to that degree. Otherwise, your life's going to be pain and you're going to waste your life. Life's too short. Yeah, newsflash. Water is wet. <laughs> yeah, Dunstan says, uh, a lot of men have forgotten to have fun in life or at least attempt it. <clears throat> Enjoy your life, guys, but enjoy it sensibly, responsibly, and uh, serious fun. Like, take take your fun seriously, as in what you lose, what potentially you could lose years of your life and the rest of your life if you don't look before you, you leap, if you don't take your life sen sensibly and be a really good caretaker of your life, treating yourself like a best friend, really be not being reckless with your life. Okay, we've been going for nearly an hour and a half, which is pretty good. Any more questions, guys? Uh, let's have the last questions and let's wrap it up. We've, um, I think an hour and a half is a nice sized stream, not too, not too long. I enjoy doing long ones when the questions are there and I've got, um, I've got the energy and the brain power. But I think in terms of people re-watching it, um, an hour and a half is, is a nice limit, I think. So yeah, 
give me your last questions guys and don't forget to like and subscribe Uh, Black Magic 1087. What age did you experience your first one itis? I noticed in film there is always the preteen or teenager who likes a girl, but she is with a jerk, or he feels wronged by her choosing um, brass over brains. Uh, one itis, as in a girl that was unattainable, or she was out of my, you know. I was fixated on her like a fantasy and I was frustrated because I could never get her or touch her or make her real. Um, probably, I can't remember, really. I don't know when I had my first one-itis. In terms of when I fell in love, um, maybe my late teens early 20s definitely i mean now when i look back on it it wasn't but then i you know i felt like i was in love um damien says before i was introduced to the red p-i-l-l -L, i used to believe that there is something wrong with me for not wanting a woman when i'm only 22 years old thoughts yeah, well, the information is more readily available. And even though um, you've had a pro proliferation of single mothers in the last couple of generations, so you haven't had fathers and male mentoring to young kids, male mentoring is now coming out like this. Men are speaking to each other online and um, more and more guys are realizing, oh, it's not just me. All guys go through this. Uh, this is the way men and women treat each other because just... Be prior to recently uh in recent times it's like all of society tells you you're doing it wrong why can't you just make relationships work you male you stupid male you, you you're not doing it right again how many times do we have to tell you like you're so pathetic at this we're waiting for you to make relationships great all us women and you're just so incompetent lol um but then you start talking to guys and the best most intelligent guys are saying no the the marketing is bs Women haven't got a clue. All they've got is the one trick pony of shame. And they don't want to. And so slowly you start to realize hang on a minute. You start to realize fairness. You start to realize what works and what doesn't. You start to realize how one sided things are. So the male man mentoring that's being lost is actually now being replenished via online. It's. It's, it's not a good substitute for a face-to-face -face mentoring with an elder or a man you respect or someone in your life that's older, but it's better than nothing. It's better than being taught to be a man by women. Women don't know how to create men. Only men know how to create other men. Uh, Lucid Dream Mikta, how does one find his own self-actualization path? Uh, start reading, start being interested, uh, there's no one size fits all. Uh, you have to have the will to be interested in the things that will start um, making you feel alive. You've got to re recognize the medicine that works for you, not just keep consuming hateful stuff, not keep throwing mud outwardly, but start consuming nutrition that makes you feel better, improves your life. Uh, Kung Fu Joe says, life is easy. There's two questions. What do you want? What are you willing to do to get it? Yeah. I can't disagree with that. Corey says, uh, how important was youth, looks, and beauty when you used to date? How about now? Well, that's about the only important thing when you're young. Uh, youth looks and beauty because you don't know much else and when you get older that falls away because you know better um, you think more there's more substance in um, what you want to commit to things like that time is more important so what are you going to give up your time for it better be worth it it better be quality not just quantity it's not just surface anymore um, as you get older it's, it's uh, substance
into bfw thanks human i'm glad to be a subscriber well thank you for subscribing i'm glad you're a sub too thanks for listening um as <laughs> samuel says we want our five minutes of muted audio but great stream thank you it helped um all right i'll give you i'm, I'm mindful i'm going to give you uh an extra 35 minutes guys i'll keep my promise <laughs> ted 1775 human how do you feel about the term karen to describe some women i think it's funny um <laughs> and someone said kraken or karen <laughs> same thing marketing are usually great liars and scammers yeah they'll um i've, I've worked in and i still work with marketing at the moment uh, in my day job and i've worked in studios agencies and marketing departments all my life and um that will do anything to push the buttons where humans will, re will react you know what do they care about kids family uh men care about women let's use sex um to appeal to men they know what buttons to push they're not stupid uh l uh off topic human what camera do you use in your videos looks brilliant um panasonic gh5 with a leica 15 mil 1.7 running through streamlabs obs with um i've got um a lot and um some uh image adju adjustment um so i've got a few things going at once but um yeah the camera's pretty good it's not a new camera but it's still one of the best cameras i've got news always not better guys appreciate what you've got <laughs> yeah i might i might do a gear video um because I, I always get um gear questions asked about me obviously they're not going to ask me too much about my audio capabilities after today's five minute stuff up eos logs what do you reckon it would take for a woman you chance upon in everyday life to genuinely spark your interest in dating them a lot um yeah but you got to just kind of learn to take it or leave it you got your standards and you're not going to expect you're not going to accept anything that's not within the ballpark of what you're attracted to uh, especially and i'm not talking just physically because a lot of guys when you say what i'm attracted to people always visually think about a beautiful person or an attractive person now i'm sort of like what i'm attracted to is what i'm compatible to what has the values that i have all right guys um if that's it uh if you've got no more questions guys uh let's uh look at wrapping it up and now I haven't forgotten to give you an extra 45, uh, 45, an extra five minutes. We're already a minute, minute into a minute and a half into an extra five minutes. So if you've got any other questions, guys, please throw them at me. We'll keep it going for, an, uh, for a few more minutes and then we'll call it a day. Uh, Lucid Dream says, please, whenever you can do a new conversation with stardust or quasi so you help more men than you realize yeah i enjoy doing conversations with um with those kind of guys uh people with interesting points of view fairly intelligent um it's it's whether or not you can kind of connect with these guys and time schedules um i haven't talked to quasi Dice in a long time uh stardust i i talk to him every now and then um on chat servers but it, it all depends on time and, and people sort of um, move into different lanes. Like I think Quasi Mandias is sort of uh, doing different things in life now. He's not producing videos as much. And that's fine. People kind of move off and do different things. I enjoy producing 
these videos. I like the craft of it. I like writing. I have a lot of these ideas. So producing videos is a, is a way in which I can actually push a lot of my creativity through. Whereas a lot of the other guys just have things to say. And once they've said their thing, they move on. All right, guys, um, if that's it, let's, um, let's call it a day, shall we? Um, thanks very much for dropping in. Ah, look, let me give you a few more minutes. I owe you. What do you want to talk about? Come on. What do I want to talk about? Do I like Judge Judy? Yeah, I don't mind her. I don't, I never watched the show, but when I listen to her talking interviews, she seems like a sensible, uh, woman. Um, I like her as a person. I'm not a fan of the show from what I've seen. Mr. Cat says, wonder where Spetsnaz is these days. He's enjoying his life uh, since he got banned. Uh, I talked to him a little while ago. Um, he's doing good. He's doing fine fellas. Um, He's gone his own way. He's doing his own thing. He's enjoying his life. Um, any more questions? No, no, no. Some of these questions, guys, I can't talk about because they're really big trigger words that um, YouTube will just ban the video and your comments um, and basically throttle this video. Um, so I can't talk about them like, you know, subjects of people switching their lights off permanently, if you know what I mean. The pictures behind, someone's asking about the pictures behind me on the wall. They're just postcards, the random postcards that I've collected over the years. Um, and I just put them up there for color. So when I do my streams, um, uh, the, the kind of environment looks interesting. It's not too bland. So it's just basically a visual drap backdrop. It's, it's not that meaningful. It's just color. <laughs> Oz Hom says, what Spice Girl would you bang? Ah, oh, none of them. None of them, really. Oh, you mean which one has the looks that um, I, found, I found more appealing? Um, I don't know. I can barely remember them. I don't know. Um... I'm not a blonde person, but the, the, that Jerry one, I think, I think just because of her mannerisms and how she came across, she, she seemed, um, more feminine than, than the rest. So I think because she was the most feminine, though, I'm not really attracted to blondes that often. So I think that one was the most appealing, but to tell you the truth, none of them. Uh, Corey, thank you very much for the super chat. Um, he says, thanks a lot. That was fun and informative. Lucid Dream says, please do a stream on Odyssey so you can talk freely. Um, yeah, if I can figure out how to do it, I think it's fairly limited. Uh, I don't think there's a streaming service on it as far as I know. I could be wrong. Anyway, guys... Uh, I don't know what else to say other than enjoy your day and I had fun and um, I'll see you in the next video. Um, catch you later. Bye.